Good morning. Welcome back to another video. As I'm getting my hair done so I can film some other content, there we go. We're gonna talk about sweat. I've said it before that sweat is not an indicator of having a good or solid workout. And I didn't really think that I had to explain that, but I do actually get a lot of comments asking me to make an entire video on it. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna hope that I have enough substantial information here to make it a whole video. But let's get out the curling iron. All right, so while we're waiting for that bad boy to heat up, let's talk about what sweat actually is. So sweat is mostly water, um, but it's gonna contain some small amounts of ammonia, urea, salts, and sugar. And the basic function of sweating is to help your body maintain its temperature. If your internal temperature becomes too high, then your body is going to sweat to help cool the skin off. And, um, that's pretty much it. That is the function of sweat. It's very simple. So obviously when you work out, there is a higher chance that you will be sweating because many workouts will elevate your heart rate and raise your body's internal temperature. So what does your body do in response? It sweats. But does that automatically mean that your workout is good? No. And to understand that, you need to think about why you're working out. What is, what is the goal? What is the purpose of your workout? If your goal is to sweat, hell yeah. Sweat is an excellent indicator of a good workout. But is your goal to gain muscle? Sweat has nothing to do with building muscle fiber. Is your goal to lose fat? Sweating doesn't put you in a caloric deficit. Is your goal to run a marathon? Sweat doesn't make you a better runner. Do you see what I'm getting at here? <laughs> We have to understand that just because there might be overlap in something doesn't mean it's the reason that it occurred. Now, will you probably sweat during most of your workouts? Yeah, but you also might not, and that's okay. Maybe your space is cold. Maybe you're more focused on strength training than cardio. Maybe you're just not a naturally sweaty person. I cannot relate to that. <laughs> I am naturally very sweaty. Sweating literally just means that your body is cooling itself off. So where did this correlation come from between sweat equaling a good workout? I think it comes from two different places. The first is group fitness. I have talked about it endlessly. I got my start in group fitness. I love group fitness, but I also think that there is a toxic expectation that everyone needs to be drenched, dying, demolished after class. I actually used to be told that from some of my old bosses. People need to walk out of that room limping, sweating, gasping for air, or they will not believe that it's a good workout. So instead of trying to change the narrative, which I understand is very difficult, especially if you have a brick and mortar in New York City and like you need to sell classes, you need to get people in there or else you're not making money and you're not gonna stay open. But instead of trying to change the narrative, it's just like, okay, well then this is, this is what we have to do. But in actuality, if you're leaving every single workout like that, you're working too hard. It's it's, it's way too much intensity. You know, I remember at one studio that I worked at, <laughs> I used to turn the heat up in the studio or like the AC down just so people would leave sweating, but I wouldn't have to make them do like a thousand mountain climbers at the end of class. <laughs> Ooh, that's a look. Because in that specific studio, like we did focus a lot more on strength. It wasn't a bad program just because people weren't leaving sweating. Strength training just does not and should not get your heart rate up as high as cardio. And if your strength training does get your heart rate up like cardio, you're doing cardio with weights. <laughs> Both are fine, but to reap like the specific physiological changes that come with strength training, you 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 can't get you can't do cardio at the same time. Like it's they're two different things. I, I've talked about that in an older video, so I'll like pop that right up here for you. Okay, so group fitness, definitely a big proponent of this sweat equals a good workout. Ooh, this is gonna be the ugliest curl. It kinda looks like, oof, that's a little ratty. All right, the other thing that I believe perpetuates this idea that sweat equals a good workout are products that are meant to make a sweat sauna suits, waist trainers, hot yoga, hot Pilates, hot bar, whatever. They're specifically selling you that sweat equals good, dry equals bad. And it is just far too simplistic. All these things do is just dehydrate you in the moment. So you get dehydrated, which is gonna drain the water from your body, which creates the illusion of being thinner. But the second you drink some water, 
it's coming right back. So instead of focusing on living in this constant state of dehydration for the aesthetic, why don't we shift the focus onto internal markers of health? No, that's not sexy. That doesn't sell. That's not going to make companies money. And you know, the only reason we get into health and fitness is to make money. I'm honestly just like constantly flabbergasted at the sheer volume of products out there that we do not need. Now, don't get me wrong. If you understand what these products do for you and you want one and you want to try it or you really enjoy it, I, I do truly think that's fantastic. But I will also tell you that most of the people buying products like this are looking for a quick fix, are hoping that this product solves whatever problem they're looking to fix. What's happening with my hair back here? Great. Quite frankly, don't understand the basics of what this product is doing to their body. And you can like kind of insert anything into that statement. The point I'm trying to make is that we are constantly tricked into purchasing things we don't necessarily need simply because this entire industry profits off of keeping us in the dark of how our bodies work. So again, if you like one of these things, if you want to buy one of these things, if you, if you like hot yoga, I've done hot yoga. I think it's really fun, but I also understand that it's not making me lose fat faster. It's not an indicator of a good workout. It's something that I've done and I enjoy and I have full ownership of that. Anyway, that was a tangent that was not in my notes and I got very heated. Um, so to wrap it up on the sauna suits and the sweat belts and all that bullshit, if you want one, get one. I want you to understand that you don't necessarily need it. The, honestly, the only case where I could see someone needing something like that is if you're an athlete and you're trying to make weight. Otherwise you don't need it, but you can get one because you can do whatever the hell you want. All right. Ooh. She's something. So I would love to hear what you guys have to say about sweat, about workouts, about all of these topics that we kind of touched on. As always, remember that I rarely speak in forms of good or bad. Like everything is kind of just on a gray neutral scale. So I'm not saying that sweating is bad. I'm not saying that group fitness is bad, right? I'm just trying to make you understand what these things are doing. <laughs> so anyway, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you all in the next one.